Okay, yeah, so you, you can see you right there. Okay. Hello. See you. Put that out of the way. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Welcome, you're listening to Sports Econ 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, and my co-host, Bruce McGowan, is not feeling well today, but we will have a guest on in the next segment, uh, Aaron Lautman, who is a strength training coach, and we're going to talk about injuries and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, let's see here. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. We're going to see if Aaron will know all of the answers to this uh, to these questions. They're a little little bit esoteric, but we'll see how well he does. You can listen to Sports Econ 101 on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Sports Byline USA, CRN, and many hundreds of stations across the country. Today's trivia theme is baseball, and as I understand it, Aaron uh, used to play shortstop um, after in high school and in college, and we'll ask him a little bit about his career and then how he got into being a strength training coach. Um, also, in the show, we're going to cover that the greatest signed baseballs ever ever sells for a record amount. We're going to talk about how much and what kind of players are on there. Uh, Denver Broncos fans started a GoFundMe <laughs> fund to get rid of a quarterback. And I, I think this is pretty funny. We'll talk about this. Uh, Rob Gronkowski just started now dipping into his NFL salary. He was living off his endorsements. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then also uh, Jose uh, Arena from the Marlins hitting uh, Braves Acuna. We'll talk a little bit about that and see uh, uh, what Aaron thinks about that with the injuries and all that. All right. So this segment of Sports Econ 101 is sponsored by Pacific Private Money, providing mortgage investments that are still currently yielding over 7.5% percent even in today's market secured by real estate mostly in california but they do have a couple of pieces outside of california it doesn't get any more conservative than that you really need to check them out at pacificprivatemoney.com they also have another website called privatemoneyloans.com where you can purchase loans right off uh, the uh, website just register with them and check them out you're listening to sports econ 101 don't touch that dial we're gonna be right back yeah, it was right on the money. money. All right, so just a little intro thing here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to save this. Oops. This is the August 18th show, right? 16th. But it's going to be for 18th. Oh, God, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just have to remember which one. It's like it's for the best of investing. I have to record a um, show. Uh, I have to record a promo for the following week. So that was for the 25th. Right. Right. Okay, it gets a little confusing. Here. That makes sense. So does all the YouTube get edited as well, or this is no. the YouTube is just you and me? It's just you and me, my friend. We're just it's getting all of this. Yeah, I like. Uh, it. That, yeah, that's another reason why we don't want to swear. That's why we don't. <laughs> that's why we don't want to swear. <laughs> and it's interesting when we do the best of investing one. Yeah. Um, that one, I, I, I've got to figure out how to to add captions. Uh, because YouTube, for some reason, can't add captions anymore. It's interesting. And then also, um, how to get it in stereo versus mono and again i don't know exactly how to do it with this thing right because then i can throw it onto our tv show for right now it's just going to go on on gotcha. youtube but i got to do exactly 56 to 59 minutes right on that so i mean yeah. it's kind of kind of kind of crazy but that's the way it is okay uh, let me knock off this first one here okay ready Ready. There we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, your host. Bruce McGowan is off today, but we do have a special Aaron Lautman, who is a strength training coach. Uh, Aaron, welcome to Sports Econ 101. Thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Okay, so first of all, uh, 
Give, give us a little bit about your, your background. Okay. I started, I mean, my background in general is yeah. been yes. sports growing up my whole life. Right? Okay. My dad put a bat in my hand and a tennis racket in my hand when I was probably two, three, right. three tops. All right. And been playing sports ever since, all the sports. And, and were you hitting the ball 150 miles an hour at, at age two? I believe my exit velocity when I was two to three years old was about about four miles an hour. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> not quite 120 like Judge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with three or four. Or on hour. tennis, either. Right? Ten, yeah, I think I was serving about uh, negative four yeah. <laughs> miles per hour on the miles per hour machine. Well, it's kind of funny. I think about... Uh, Tiger Woods and watching him on the Mike Douglas show when he was three years old, and and they had him on because he you get to ten feet out. yeah yeah and then also just driving the ball yeah and they had little clubs it was awesome okay go ahead uh, so you know progressing through high school playing sports get to college and hurt my back squatting and uh, I believe you know who we had now, now doing squats doing squats okay, doing squats, doing okay. squats. how much uh, weight did you have on there <laughs> it's embarrassing That's I okay. think it was maybe one thirty five. Okay, but you know it depends. I mean, if you do it the wrong way and et cetera, I mean, you can easily hurt your back you or can, whatever. Yeah, like you can get hurt sure. in your body weight. Yeah. And so I, I'm pretty sure I dropped in, went to stand up. There goes the back. Mm. So for two years in college, I actually slept on the floor. No. <laughs> With just the carpet, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, just like carpet, blanket, and pillow. I mean, that was the only thing that was comfortable. Yeah, if I slept on a bed. I couldn't I couldn't bend at the waist. So fielding a ground ball, I was I was doing it little league style at times with like one knee down. Oh yeah, yeah. Kind of just like Ooh. yeah. I know, I, I've had like, back problems myself, so I, I, I just I'm, I'm feeling it now yeah. when you're talking. Go ahead. It's so it's it's a pretty brutal it's a pretty brutal thing to hurt your back. Did, did you herniate a disc or, or no, it was you? just it was just muscular. Oh and this is oh. right, this is probably huh, about to date myself. It's okay. Uh what, 13, 14, 14 years ago, 15 ish okay. years ago. Okay. And so it was, you know, we were advanced a little bit in the strength and the recovery, yeah. but nothing compared to where we are today. And so I think okay. it was. Okay, so let me stop you for a second. What's changed so much from 15 years ago to today? I think the emphasis on recovery and, and injury, um, hmm. okay. I guess prevention. Okay. So right. back in the day, you know, you, you jump on the, the trainer table and they would. Yeah. And they would, um, they would do ultrasound. Okay. You know, they would do the heat creams, but I feel like the advanced of you know tissue massage, and I think really the the prehab was more advanced. Yeah, rather than now. throwing the band aid on after. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So I don't think we recovered well, and I think a lot of times as athletes, you want to push through. Well, also part of it, I always think is if you don't push through, there was always the idea that someone else is going to take your job. There's a next guy up mentality. Yeah. Every level from little league to yeah. to the pros and you don't want to lose your spot. No. And if some guy shows that he can play at least as well, I mean, there you go. There you so, go. Okay. I understand. So you push through it and you do the best you can. And then during the off season, you try and recover. Okay. Um, so when I got out of college and I was done with baseball, you don't know what you want to do. Went back to grad school okay. and thought, all right, well, maybe I'll teach kids at all levels and ages to to, to move properly. So I did physical education, okay. got my K through 12 credential, oh. which is madness. So <laughs> I wanted a little bit more of a, sure. like a personal, a personal, you know, one-on-one -on -one, -on -one yeah. situation where I can really delve in and, and try and keep athletes from from getting hurt, keep okay. them on a field, teach them proper movement from a younger age. So as they progressed, at least they'd have a better idea of how am I supposed to move? What am I supposed to feel? And if things are awry in my body, at least I can, can tell somebody like this doesn't feel right. So what did you, you know, what kind of education did you get to move you to that level? Right. So my, I got my undergrad in exercise science, physical education, and a minor in health. Okay. And my uh, graduate was the K through 12 teach credential and I went through the master's program for kinesiology at San Francisco State. Okay, because over time, like I said, 15 years ago, the science was X and then right. uh, I guess what experimentation happened and people kind of started realizing, that, you know, hey, if we do things a little differently, we can prevent or, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, isn't it kind of experimentation a little bit? It's it's a it's a combination of advancements in, in medicine in general. Okay. I think right. advanced in medicine 
in, in all aspects uh, from doctors, from surgery, um, sports medicine, as far as, you know, all the pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we also, you know, we advanced in, as far as how we move biomechanically. Yeah. And also the medication for recovery too. Right. right. They, yeah. They've come up with brand new tools, yeah. brand new massage therapy that you can do like self myofascial release where you're basically giving yourself a deep tissue massage with lacrosse balls or oh yeah these gadgets that you you know stick oh yeah i have like, one of those i, I exactly I like it. i can give myself a, a nice little deep tissue massage because i know exactly where i need it exactly yeah. you know, going to a brookstone and yeah. they have a bajillion yeah little massage tools that you can use and they're some are funky and some some are legit yeah no um, I agree. and then throughout the course of the career you you pick up certifications right so i can you know trx and USA Olympic weightlifting level one, uh, pre and postnatal. I got my EMT um, through Cal Fire. So I've tried to diverse oh, okay. by myself in a lot of different modalities to make sure that whoever comes my way. Gotcha. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be just sports, could be firefighters, anybody. Right? Police, yeah. Gotcha. Anybody. Because okay. I don't have my own place, right? So it's not like I have a, a boot camp gym. Yeah. I, you know, I go to different locations and work with different kinds of people. Okay. Uh, what are the biggest injury, or what are the most common injuries you, you, you're seeing in the in the workplace? In the workplace, it's yeah. going to be lower back, yeah. knees, okay. and neck. And uh, the knees is it just the lack of lifting correctly? I think it's a combination of two things. I, well, we sit. Most people sit all day long, yeah. and that causes a lot of imbalances in posture. Okay. Right. So we're hunched over at the shoulders. We're bent at the waist. And you know, we're, we're I, I feel like I have to do good posture now. I'm talking to you, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, when we start either exercising, people go on runs because they're easy and they're free, and it's beautiful in the Bay Area. Yeah. And we have a lack of mobility in our hips. We have a lack mm. of strength in our hamstrings and glutes because they're they're very specific. And because everybody, that's a huge generality, but most yeah. people are quad dominant. Yeah, they lack that strength posterior chain, gotcha. glutes and hamstrings, and yeah, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> and the quads are more likely to you know to pull on the knees. Okay, as you run, the quads more tight. Yeah, and the hip gets shorter to the knee, and the quads get more tight. So, is the first thing you try to get people to do is stretch? I mean, before and after? Or, uh, uh, you tell me. <laughs> um, different kinds of uh, mobility. Okay. So anything from. Uh, Static stretching to dynamic stretching to uh, foam rolling, some of those. Oh yeah, some oh, of those I, gad, yeah. Oh man, those, I, I just I, I cringe when I think about the IT bands uh, with those foam rollers. That little foam roller is is, is it's just it just gets me <laughs> every time. Yeah, it's tough. And it doesn't matter how much you roll, you will find another. Yeah. Little knot, and I've seen people sweat more during foam rolling <laughs> than my workout, which is. Well, sweat from, from pain. Just pain. Just, just pain. It's, yeah. it's a brutal, it's a brutal thing we do to ourselves. I know it's funny. My daughter sometimes. It's, I mean, she's in college now, but every once in a while, I'll like, let's like sit and watch TV, and I'll just kind of go, you know, I'll just poke her a little bit. I'll say, <laughs> IT bands. No, no, IT bands. You know. Yeah. Anyway, hey, we're gonna cut to a commercial break. We're gonna ask a trivia question here. All right. So we're talking about old baseball now. Who replaced Judge Landis as commissioner upon his death? The, if you remember uh, Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis, I think that was his name, uh, he came in because of the 1919 Black Sox scandal. And uh, so he was, I think, believe he was the first commissioner. So here's the question, basically, it was who replaced him? Who was the second commissioner? Right? You might know the name. You might know the name. Yes. But uh, don't answer it now. I'm not going to try. Okay. Email edward at sportsecon101.com the answer to that question. And don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Yeah. Okay, that was good. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Um, it's so funny. I bought a towel one time from Vern because he would he'd do this, and if you listen, you could hear them. You can hear it. You can hear it. Yeah, so that's, that's okay. It's just the ones. Time flies. It does. I told you it would. I knew it would. Yeah. But once you get into the rhythm of it, uh -huh. and you're just like you know shooting conversation, you're like wow, that was fast and fun. Yeah. Oh, it's really fun when Bruce is here. I bet. He's a he's a um, 
even though he's older, he's uh, he, he likes us to uh, body surf. Body surf. Body surf. Yeah, he got a little hand ski. Yeah. yeah. And he, he goes out almost every day. Today he's sick, but he probably wouldn't. That is just way too cold. Yeah, well, he's got a wetsuit, but uh, okay. still. Yeah. It's, so, it's so really cold out there. I can't. It is. No, thanks. Yeah. No, thank you. And I'll think of about other, other things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of other stuff I can do on land where I'm not frozen. Yeah. All right, so let's see here what we want to cover in our next segment. Um, Talk about you know. Uh, let's get more back onto the sports yeah. where you know you're you're you know working. I guess different sports take different athletes' abilities, you know, and what you do with that. Right. Like how do I how do I set up programs for the different athletes? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And the reason I do this is um, they usually want like a few seconds before and after so they can right. splice it together. Right, of course. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time, I'm Edward Brown, your host. Our special guest, uh, Aaron Lautman. Uh, Bruce is off today. Here is our first trivia question. Who replaced Judge Landis as commissioner upon his death? And the answer is Albert Chandler. Happy Chandler? Remember the name Happy Chandler? It's kind of a hard question. If Bruce was here, I'm sure he would have just spit out the answer. Yeah, All right, so uh, Aaron Lautman, who is a strength training coach. We were just uh, starting to talk about this in the last segment. Let's, let's move on to uh, different sports. Different athletes are going to need different kinds of strength training, I would, I would have presumed. Yes. What, what kind of setups do you have? You know, what, what do you do for the Right, team? so... Everybody needs the basics, right? So we all need mobility and we all need flexibility and we all need our basic posture and strength throughout the you know, full body. Okay. But if we're talking about the, uh, the professional cyclists that I work with, okay. they're completely different than my baseball player, yeah. right? So for, for a cyclist, we want everything to be unstable. Unstable. Everything unstable. Meaning, meaning. So we're using Bosu balls, which is that that funky half dome ball where yeah, it's part of it's balance. blue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, then the, and the under part is black. <laughs> yeah. And on either side, it, it's going to be completely unstable. So we use those for um, deadlifts, right? So if you're going to do a single leg deadlift on the ground, you're planted on the ground. Okay. And it's hard enough. But if we throw you on the bottom of the Bosu on the black portion of it, you're going to become completely unstable. Yeah. And now all the little joints and micro muscles in your ankles, your knees, and your hip are going to have to fire. Yeah, because I, I remember hearing that you know there's so many of these little muscles that people don't even get a chance to really exercise. Right, because when we do our big compound movements, your squats and your deadlifts and your push-ups and your 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 overhead press, you're going to focus more on the larger <laughs> muscles, right? So you're going to yeah. focus on quads and glutes and hamstrings, yep. uh, delts. Uh, the pecs, mm -hmm. the chest, the back, the lats. When you when you put yourself in an unstable position, you give the rest of the connective tissue around the joints an opportunity to really fire. Gotcha. And but uh, okay, so uh, you take the Bosu ball and you turn it upside down. Yes. And so now okay. the blue so, part is on the ground, which is the soft part. Yes. Which again, it's very very uh, wobbly. Very wobbly. And is the idea i know there's some exercises where you stand on it and you're just balancing yourself right but on a what would you say a one leg deadlift a single leg deadlift so you're gonna you're gonna put your foot smack in the middle okay of the of the the, the bottom of it yeah and you're basically just trying to uh, pel uh pelican uh flamingo flamingo you're gonna flamingo yourself towards the ground so the the leg that's off the ball comes up and your body moves towards the floor, so now you're in like a tabletop. Yeah. While you're trying to stabilize yourself on one foot. Wow. And just you know, that's a that's a very without any weight to start. <laughs> to start. I know. I'm just, I'm 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 getting wobble. I can't. I'm falling out of my chair just yeah. thinking about the because I know exactly what you're talking about. And I'm thinking. I mean, you step in the middle of that thing, and it's still wobbling. It's still wobbling. Just standing there's wobbling. Yeah. But the amazing thing that happens in your body. From the first set to the second set, you can't stand on it. To now, you can almost perform the movement full. And is it just 
your brain getting acclimated to, I mean, I know your, your muscles have to, but you know, your brain has to, to of acclimate to that. So it's, it's all right. It's your whole neurological pathways from brain telling your leg, we have to balance. I don't want to fall. Yeah. And then it's all these little micro muscles and connective tissues in the joints that for the most part, don't get any real activity throughout the day. They have to understand what to do to keep themselves stable, to keep you up. I would like to have like a bunch of foam around so that I can just like <laughs> fall anytime. Yeah, exactly. Snowboarders use. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Keep like it all that. around you. So you put your foot right in the middle, and you're. Are you trying to originally balance on the one foot, or are you just one leg is on the or one knee is on the ground while no. you're? Okay. You're just standing there. Standing there. Just standing one there like foot. a flamingo. And that's just a, that's yeah. something basic, right? We do lots of other things with Bosu. There are. Um, bongo boards revolution boards there looks like a skateboard yeah and it has the cylinder that you put under the board one cylinder one cylinder yeah, yeah. and you're just balancing yeah you're just skating back and forth on it and yeah. the same thing to get on it yeah just to get it well i was gonna say if, if you like a teeter-totter you get teeter -totter. Uh, on you, you can you do that that you put on the on the ground on one soft one so your leg or your foot is on the ground on one of them yes and then you put your foot on the other one up yes. and you just shift your weight and that's how you it's do it all, yeah it's all okay. about it's all about finding your center yeah because right? you can't just jump on it no if you, you can <laughs> if you want to trip to the hospital <laughs> yeah. excuse if me you don't like your wrists yeah just hop on. <laughs> yeah that's a big thing uh like for skateboarders rollerbladers yeah. i mean they pick up snowboarders snowboard daily yeah, but i mean snowboarders i mean you land in the snow but i mean yeah you can Break your wrist, but I'm just thinking from your wrist standpoint. You ever catch a back edge on a snowboard? No, yeah. I've never. I've only gone skiing. <laughs> catch it's a back a, edge you catch or... a back edge and you go straight back. <clears throat> the first thing you do is you put your hand out to oh, brace yourself. Oh, gotcha. And a lot of times you land on that wrist. Yeah. And depending on how strong you are, or, or how you land, or how fast you are going, sprain, break. Okay, so okay. that that brings me to this that. Is it true that because there's less blood flow going to ankles, that's you're going to see a lot more injuries on the ankles, or anywhere anywhere where there's less blood going through? You know what I mean? Yes, it's it depends on the injury, and okay. more so I believe with recovery because blood flow is oh, the yeah. key to recovery. Gotcha. So if you have less blood flow to where you've hurt yourself, you're going to have you know less of the nutrients, less of the oxygen. You're going to have a lot less. Um, a lot less blood into that into that yeah. area, and it's going to recover much slower. Well, like, I'm thinking like with basketball. Right. I, mean, I I really did a number on mine when I was 34, where I literally tore all the ligaments, cartilage, and tendons. I mean, it was just awful. Uh, you don't see it quite as bad with pro basketball players, but you do see it where they they turn that ankle. And I'm, not, I'm wondering, like, what can they realistically do? other than put a brace that's so strong but then they won't have the mobility right well i think shoe design has played a huge role <coughs> basketball players just used to wear chuck taylors which are super flimsy throughout the entire ankle support they have that you know firm bottom yeah but there is no ankle support so is it just so that they can the mobility is the reason why they have those kind i think well back in the day i just don't know if they didn't have high tops. <laughs> I don't yeah. think designers were really concerned with injury and ankles and and. Yeah. But now basketball players are so strong, they're so fast, and they're so agile that that companies like the big brands they need to develop shoes and braces that are really really dialed in, especially with ankles to to give as much support as possible for the cutting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then you, they still have to have enough flexibility right. so that they can run. Otherwise, it'll look like a mummy running up and down the court. <laughs> yes. Can't have that. What What's the worst injury you've seen from myself or from? Uh, okay, we'll talk about yourself and then talk. Well, go ahead, talk about yourself. And uh, then from okay, others. so so my worst injury is an embarrassing one. Okay. Uh, about twelve years old, uh, street football in New York, mm -hmm. going out for a pass. I don't think I remember <laughs> seeing this van in the street, but okay. the quarterback still didn't need to throw it in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And it was in the middle of the street. So it's no, it's parked on the side, and he, did, the he side led me. Down. He it was um, a perfect row. Yeah. He led me right into that van. Well, when we were kids, the idea was you go in between two vehicles <laughs> so that the like, defender could barely get a shot <laughs> yeah. at you. Okay. Thankfully, he wasn't moving, but I went full tilt in the air into the back of this van, and that is the last thing I remember. Wait, wait in the air? I jumped for the ball. You jumped for the ball. If the van wasn't there, were you still playing on the road on cement or? I didn't lay out, right? So I just like, oh, okay. I just leaped kind of vertically straight up. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Right? So I catch the ball. Yeah. And then lights out. Lights out. Lights out. It was the most important thing. Did you hold on to the ball? Apparently I did. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, yeah. That's impressive. Score six for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the craziest thing was, was, so I come to, I get carried out of the street. And the worst part was, was it wasn't my head, even though I had a, I had an egg yeah. coming out past the brim of my hat. Uh -huh. Um, I was in the air and I, I I hit the bumper with stuff and I couldn't I couldn't walk I couldn't you move. Mean your private parts? The private parts, oh, right on the bumper. Oh, oh, oh that's got a spot. Yeah, and it's a it's amazing how much the brain will tell you to forget about one injury and oh yeah and move that attention right to another. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about my head. No, I, I <laughs> being a guy, I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what you mean. Yeah, so that was uh, my worst. Okay, what have you seen uh, from? people you work with so from people that i work with it's you know it's it's really basic sprains and strains and and micro to to minor tears of you know a cyclist that gets thrown from the handlebars oh yeah puts the arm out to brace themselves and you get a you get a, a pull or something in the shoulder and now you're you're back to square one so are, are, are most of are most people seeing you prior to injury or are they most people seeing you, okay, I've got this injury. How do I get better? Both. Oh. So I've worked with people that, um, some of the athletes, they'll, go, they'll be doing their sport and they tweak something and we have to kind of get them back to yeah. strength, full strength again. And then I've had people that I've specifically seen, you know, they'll be in a walking boot. They have Achilles tendinosis. Oh, yeah. And we have to rehab them back to being able to not even be in a boot so they can continue to run because that's their, you know, that's their passion. That's their, that's their gotcha. bliss. All right, tell you what, believe it or not, cutting to another commercial break. It does go fast. <laughs> All right, talking baseball here. What war veteran returned from war and hit a home run that gave his team a pennant on the final day of the season? Yeah, that's our trivia question. You have to go back in a little bit in time on this. For us, uh, for uh, <laughs> email Edward at sportsecon101.com, that question. Don't touch that dial. We're going to be right back. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, it's good, it's good stuff. Yeah. Do you ever? Uh, I'd probably ask you. Oh, I will probably ask you this on the air. Um, you probably can't really consult with people over the phone. You really have to kind of see them in person. I would think. I can get the general gist okay. of what they need or want or what they've been through over the phone. You know, okay. initial consult, and then call me up and say, I. You know, when I move my arm in this way, or you know, my back hurts if I move in this motion. I've had this okay. this leg pain now for a couple months, and it no matter what, I've gotten massages and I've seen some physical therapy. Okay. But it's well, let me ask you that on the air, and okay. then well, because I don't want to forget about you know if anyone has any questions, I can of course. you know because who knows if people are going to call? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. <clears throat> Whatever. This is a blast. Yeah, so, yeah, fun. this is fun. Yeah, the business one will be fun. Yeah. It'll be very similar to this, except uh, Nom, either Mark or Nom from Business Private Money will be okay. there. So we'll ask some questions. Yeah. Here we go. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here, along with our special guest, Aaron Lautman. Bruce McGowan is not feeling well today. That rascal, he'll be back next week. Uh, second trivia question was, what war veteran returned from war and hit a home run that gave his team a pennant on the final day of the season? I, I want to say Ted Williams. I mean, no, that's what I would have thought, too. Right. You know, because, you know, he went to, to war twice, yes. right? Actually, it was Hank Greenberg in 1945 for the Tigers over the Braves. All right. I was going to say, not necessarily a trick question, but one that you wouldn't have thought the answer. No, I would have never said that. I know, that would have been tough. Because I, I was thinking Hank Greenberg, I keep thinking of him in the 30s, but I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's right. He played through the 40s. Was 33, I think, was his big year. But um, anyway, so uh, in the studio here, we have uh, Aaron Lautman, who is a strength training coach. And Aaron, do people ever, like, call you on the phone and, and say, can you help me? Or do you have to see them in person? 
initially you can call. Okay. Right? You can call and say, uh, most most of the people that I work with are through referrals. I've helped somebody or I've worked with a team or a specific athlete and somebody goes, you got to work with this guy if you have okay. this or that. So initially you get a phone call and it's, I have my son or I'm trying to train for this yeah. um, or this is my injury and then we can go over it together on the phone. But okay. everything that we're going to do as far as either rehab or working out or the training programs, I would much prefer to see the person in person. Of course. Yeah. It's, like, just, it's like a doctor trying to uh, analyze somebody yeah. about taking a look I at kinda, it. You know, I have to see how you move. I have to see, you know, you might think that the injury is one thing, but a lot of injuries are stemming from something else. Yeah, so, good point. You know, your knee might be hurting, but it could be that your, your hamstrings are really tight. And yeah. so we strengthen the hamstring, tension off of the quad, and now the knee pain gets relieved. And then how, do, like, for some reason, the audience has, uh, you know, I know the people in New Hampshire, you know, are going to, how am I going to call this guy who's in California? But eh, who knows? Yeah. I mean, how do people get a hold of you? They do. My cell phone or my email. Okay. You want to give out both. Okay. So my email is my first and last name. It's, it's Aaron Lautman 17 at gmail.com. So it's A A R O N L A. U T M A N one seven at Gmail. Does that mean that there were a, a lot of Aaron Lautmans out there and you it took a while to find there was, one? There were apparently sixteen. Sixteen other of them. Yeah, you kept going number one, number two, now <laughs> no, no, no. It yeah. was uh, seventeen was my number in college. Oh gotcha. That's, I think that was my uh, number on my softball team. There you I go. Like yeah, I didn't think Aaron Lautman was long enough. So I figured Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some more on top. Okay, and then uh, if a cell phone, if people want. Yeah, so if you want to give me a call, my cell phone is nine two five eight nine five six five six six. That is my personal phone number, mm -hmm. so you don't have to, you know, you can leave the email. I, I pick up from most most of the calls, and okay. um, yeah, feel free to get in touch. If yeah. you have any even if you just have questions, sure. Um, yeah, reach out. And do you have other um, colleagues like or around? You know, at, let's say out of state, who you work with? I don't. You don't. Oh, no, no, okay. No. I've just kind yeah. of done my own thing. Okay. But the nice thing is, somebody in New York or somebody calls you, you could could say, okay, you know, it sounds like what what you're telling me is X. Yes. And then when you go see a, a, a strength training coach or an orthopedist or whoever, you might want to have a look at this. Yeah, yeah fair enough. You know, because you're not being a doctor, you're just kind of giving your. I am absolutely not a doctor. No, you're just giving no. your professional opinion. Yes. But I've had enough tweaks and enough little little injuries, and I've done almost every program I can, you know, I've found under okay. the sun as far as strength and conditioning. So I've seen what I've done myself. I've fixed myself, and I've seen tons and tons of athletes, and I have a general idea of. And that's what we got. Is, is how how did you get hooked up with uh, working with athletes? Um. Being an athlete myself, mm -hmm. uh, and then when you live in the Bay Area, everybody's an athlete. Right? Yeah. So you have your cyclists, <laughs> yeah. you have your runners, you have your hikers, you have your surfers, your paddle boarders, um, your but, skiers. But how did you like attract them? Uh, I mean, I you know people can't see you uh, except for lighting this, <laughs> streaming this live to, live yeah on YouTube. Uh, but for those in the audience, uh, Aaron is in, in, in very good shape. You you kind of look like. You, you look like, I don't want to say exactly like a bodybuilder, not on steroids, because I've seen, I know the difference between them, you know, and I can tell yes. you don't do steroids, but you are in good shape, you know. Um, so the thing is, you know, people kind of look, hey, how did you get in good shape, right. that sort of thing. So I had a gym in Mill Valley okay. uh, for about a year, and we had a an ex-pro road cyclist turned mountain biker, okay. and she had strength coaches you know, for her, for her, you know, all of her cycling life. And I kind of brought a new aspect into her drink, corrected some things. How did that happen? Did you just say, uh, you know, I'm watching you and you're kind of doing some things wrong or <laughs> so, I, yeah, as, as politely as possible, yeah. I believe I was like, are you doing a full squat? And she was like, yeah, that's my full squat. I'm like, is it? Okay. Well, can I give you a little advice on how to actually make that a full squat? Like, a okay, work, you know that's a that's squat. a very nice way of 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 the introduction. Oh, it really is because I'm I'm thinking, you know, some people might kind of be put off. You know, if you just kind of go, uh, you're doing that all wrong. Right. You know, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. Give them a chance to say, no, this is not my full squat. I'll show you a full squat. And so, but she was like, no, this is how I squat. And I so I just 
oh, can I show you a little bit more range of motion? You can hit a little bit more of the muscle groups. Oh. Um, work with, started working with her. She started getting much faster on the bike, descending better, more stability. Huh. You know, and so, okay, how'd you, how, how'd you get so fast? Well, I started working with this guy. Yeah, gotcha. So you, you meet one person and yeah. they, they turn you on to another person. That, um, that's, that's how it works. And, you know, it's interesting that uh, you mentioned that because my, my wife used to do figure competition and she'd worked with a number of trainers. And so there was this one machine where this trainer had showed her that if she, uh, instead of instead of facing the machine on this one, you, you, she, I think what it was was no, no. Instead of facing away, okay, you, if you face the machine, it hit different muscles and worked out different way. And I don't remember exactly the machine because it's going back a number of years. And this guy who was a trainer um, was training just some other person, and and he stops what he's doing and he, he just kind of just goes over to my wife and says you know you're doing that all wrong you're supposed to be facing the other way and then she just kind of looks at him and says hey i've been training for you know <laughs> you know yeah. so, right, so he didn't handle it the correct way right it was not politically correct oh, yeah and the thing is it's funny because if you looked at my wife at the time you could tell she knew what she was doing right. but anyway, she's been in the gym she's before. been in the gym before she's exactly done thing before. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely yeah. Uh, so and then through that same gym um i met a person that worked for a high school in the city and she was you know an uh, assistant athletic director and so she put me in touch with the basketball coach who was looking to get more strength and conditioning ah. for the basketball team beyond just drills dribbling suicides in the court yeah. and stuff like that uh, so I got hooked up with them oh. uh, started mm -hmm. working with some of those basketball players and then again you know one person tells another person yeah. and so between uh, the cyclist who then introduced me to one of the uh, you know two-time mountain bike champ and she has all uh she has a bunch of professional teams that's been, great yeah, it's great so i've oh, been working great. with well, you're a nice guy too so you're easy to, to <laughs> yeah, you know, easy to you. work with yeah you know it's funny i was thinking uh, you, you ever watch seinfeld sadly sadly, <laughs> sadly no sadly no i thought you were gonna say sadly uh, you knew every episode i'm from new york and i, oh, yeah. just, couldn't, <laughs> I just couldn't pull my ass Frank kramer was a little too much kramer, yeah exactly well that's one of the episodes i was thinking about is is where he uh, you know the, the, there's a famous one you know with jimmy he talks to the third person right and, and jimmy's got these special shoes where there's kind of like a you ever see like some of these old uh paintings where it's a religious painting and they have kind of like a weird sort of a halo around the per, you know, quick Virgin Mary or something, right? right? Well, it kind of looks like that. He's got the shoe and it's got this extra little part all around the shoe. And it looks really weird, but apparently it helps Jimmy jump a lot higher than, <laughs> than anyone else. And so uh, Kramer yes. and, uh, and and George uh, go on the, the, the circuit trying to basically, I, I don't know, hopefully, but basically trying to sell these shoes. And I'm wondering, do you have any special equipment? Because I can just imagine, you know, if you're, if you're helping some of these basketball players and suddenly they're jumping three or four inches higher than they used to, question becomes, well, how, well, how, why? You know? Yeah. Uh, but do you remember those? Do you, do you remember the shoes that used to have like the the spring? Yeah. The heel? Yeah. That was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think those lasted very long. <laughs> no. They were, uh, it, I think it. It's so funny because actually those probably would give your body a good workout. I would think. Yeah, jumping on the trampoline. Yeah, that's yeah, that's effectively what it was. Effectively, <laughs> yeah. Was. I mean, it's amazing. Jumping on the trampoline is exhausting. It's exhausting. I mean, it's, and it's you know, as long as you don't land wrong. I mean, I remember going into you know, my kids were little doing you know, a bounce house. Yes. And the thing that was good about it is you rarely would get hurt unless you you know land on your head and neck or something like that. But that was exhausting to play with the kids in that. Yes. And I gotta think that's gotta be good for me. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's great. I mean, the, they're, gosh, is it the eighties? The yeah. trampolines are pretty huge. Yeah. Those little teeny tiny. My mom had one. Oh yeah, that's right. You bounce around all morning. Yeah. Going, yeah. But again, if you have those huge ones in your yard, thank God they started putting up those. Yeah. The, the barriers. Those barrier nets, because yeah. I had plenty of friends that would just launch themselves off. Yeah. And just, there's, there goes your shoulder. That's right. Or, 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 or worse, you, you land. Uh, uh, in, a, in a bad area on the springs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the that area, was a tough one. Same area I hit on the bump. Uh, exactly. <laughs> As you can tell, this is a family show, so yes, we, yes. We, we like to keep it clean. Um, let's see, we had a couple more minutes before a, another commercial yeah. break. Uh, see, I'll tell you. Uh, so what are, what are, what are the, your biggest focuses when working uh, with athletes? Is it to avoid getting hurt, or is it specifically how to get stronger what, what, what do you mostly focus on first and foremost it's injury prevention okay 
because I don't care how strong you are, I don't care how fast you are, or or how long you can do something. If you hurt, you can't do it. And when you get to be my age, which is <laughs> almost as much as Methuselah, then you know we don't recover as fast. Right, the recovery, yeah, and and injuries linger, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're, our bodies recover pretty fine, but there's always that little bit of scar tissue. There's there's always that. You know that little bit of extra give in the tendon or or, or yeah. little muscle breakdown. So well, I had an old uh, uh, an old associate of mine who was in his uh, I guess he was in his early sixties. Really funny guy. Love this guy to death. And um, <laughs> he he hurt his thumb by peeling too many pistachios. <laughs> he, and it's not that he injured it per se, but he just overworked it. Right. And so for months, he kept saying, man, pistachio thumb. And it's just, he just said, can't get rid of the pain, you know? So we have this thing called pistachio thumb. Yeah, thank God for shell pistachio. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And you have to worry about just popping them in. Right, right, too like, many at a time. Oh, my gosh. Cause that's kind of, it's amazing how much how many calories those are. Do, do you work a lot with nutrition, too? A ton. Yeah. Yeah, I do a lot of nutrition um, for athletes and just the general public. Uh, Got the nutrition certification, plant based more. I'm a vegetarian now. Okay. Um, I don't so put, what do you do for the protein then? You can get, so that's the funny thing. You don't need a ton of protein. Even, really? if, okay. even if you're a big lifter, okay. uh, it's more about you know carbohydrate timing, sugar timing, and then protein ah. types. It's about the timing. So you can, I mean, Kyrie Irving's a you know, vegan, and there are plenty of athletes now that are vegan. Yeah. Again, plenty of nuts have tons, hemp seeds have. 10 grams for three tablespoons and eggs, you know, oh, yeah. if you're not vegan, you eat eggs. Yeah. Um, some, you know, basic protein powders. And I know that even though eggs have a lot of cholesterol, if you're constantly moving, you can move a lot of that cholesterol right through your blood system, right? Sure. I mean, forgetting the, the um, you know, hereditary. Right. You know, right. Because that, that's going to be a big So problem. much of cholesterol is, is going to be based on genetics, you know, and, yeah. and what kind you produce. And then, you know, Diet to play big yeah, yeah. LDLs are you know, HDLs. What kind of LDLs? LDL is a bad one, generally, isn't it? HDL is a good one. So HDL is is the quote unquote good one, and LDL is the quote unquote bad one. You can have different LDLs depending on you know what's going on in the liver. And, it's all Greek to me. Yeah. Okay, here's our third and final trivia question. I tell you this this thing, this goes so fast. We weren't able to even cover some of this other stuff. We'll have to cover that next show. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. do it. It's okay. All right. What historical event was overshadowed the same day by Nolan Ryan's seventh no hitter? Right. Something else happened on that same day, and it kind of overshadowed his seventh no hitter. That's the question. All right. Don't test that now. Sports Econ 101. I'll be back with some closing comments. Isn't it amazing? We go, we go so fast, but we're going to cover a lot of that stuff. Good, good stuff, though. You know. So this is fine. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, again, however, well, you don't really do much social media or whatever, but what you can do, however you blast the word, you can tell people they, if they go on to Sports Byline USA live at 1 p.m. on Saturday, they okay. can listen to the show as it's going on. Pacific, yeah. Yeah. Um, within a week or two after, it'll show up, as, and I'll show you where it'll yeah, show yeah, that'd up. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And then that way you can just point people to it. Yes. And it'll stay up for a, a fairly long time. This is super fun. I don't have to start my own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a good time. Yeah, it only cost about five hundred dollars to get this stuff. Really? Yeah, and I someone gave me the software, um, but again, all it does is just whatever happens is I save the five files, right. I send it to the station. And they put it together with music and commercials, so, so it'll sound cool. like a like a real show. Not like a real show. It is a real show. It, it is, but I mean, rather than I'm on a real show, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but rather than just being like like on YouTube, all all that happens is that people just see us right. talking and listening, yeah, yeah, yeah. like this. But it's kind of neat when you you know you hear like you know music and you hear like like real commercials. Yeah, so no, it's like, cool. oh, this, is, this is really professional. Is this for real? This is for real. <laughs> all right. So, so we have done. This, uh, almost, we just have a, just a two and a half minute oh, outro. Wow. Then yeah. we're done. Then we're done, and then you'll come back at around three forty-five. Yeah, absolutely. Pointing. All right, here we go. Well, welcome back to Sports Econ One Hundred and One. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with my special guest Aaron Lautman, who is a strength training coach. Uh, let's see. Last trivia question was, what historical event was overshadowed the same day by Nolan Ryan's seventh no-hitter? And I remember exactly where I was at the time. I owned a condo, and I was watching the baseball game at the time. 
Any idea? An earthquake? Uh, no. This is 1991. Okay. And it, Ricky Henderson stole uh, his stolen base record over Lou Brock. And uh, you know, we, were, we were big Ricky Henderson fans, but I, I got to say the one embarrassing thing was, I still remember this. I think he played for Toronto at the time. He gets the third base and he breaks the record. And instead of just being really humble about about it, he, he picks up the base, holds it over his head. People are cheering. And he says, I am now the greatest base dealer of all time. Well, you know, you didn't have to say that. I mean, love Ricky, we all love you. Yes, we all know you are the greatest. Yes. Don't say you're the greatest. You know, let other people say you're the greatest. He wasn't on the A's? Not then. Not then. I, uh, by then, he had uh, been traded, I believe, to Toronto. Okay. Because in 89, you know, they won the World Series. Right. Um, but then I believe in 90 or 91, he had gotten traded. I believe he got traded okay. to Toronto back then. I mean, he played for a lot of teams. Yeah. My brother would have known him. He's a huge Ricky fan. Oh, yeah. And so was I for many years. And I still am. It's just that, that one thing. I, like I, I'll, yeah, I still like him. I, like him. I, think, I think one day he'll kind of look back and go, gosh, I've matured a little bit more. I probably shouldn't have said that. I mean, hey, we've all said things, you know, all, yes. all these years. Absolutely. All right. So, Aaron Lautman, thank you very much for thank joining you. me at Sports Econ 101. It was, a, it was a pleasure listening to about strength training and all the kind of fun stories. Uh, so, here, we're going to give our thoughts for the day. If you don't fight for what you want, don't cry for what you lost. Good one, huh? I, I, Bruce loves when I come up with these things. He's, he's, he's very philosophical. Is this, a, is, this an, is this an Edward Brown original? No, I wish oh, I could okay. say it. I steal these All from right. the internet. And then you read it on the internet, so it must be true. Yeah. And sometimes you will never know the true value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Isn't that the truth? That one. And with those sappy thoughts, <laughs> tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown, your host. We'll see you next week. Funny, he Bruce usually says so long. Yeah. yeah. Like, Good night, America. That was that was Vern's thing, and we kind of we we stole it from him. All right, we're going to cut out here from Sports Econ 101. All right, so I'm going to end that one there. I'm going to save this one here.